I am very pleased to be talking with Robin Flair today. How are you, Robin? Good, Liz. How are you? Great. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about Surrender Your Story, mm -hmm. which is a book collaboration that we are doing. And um, I'd love to hear from you a little bit about where this idea came from. Sure. Sure. For this so, book. Yeah. So every New Year's Day, I do a meditation and I always work with my spiritual guidance as to what would you like me to learn this year? What would you like me to know? And they give me an, an, an assignment. I mean, it's, it's, it's range from become an Akashic record reader to learn to stay in the present moment. <laughs> we could go mm -hmm. or learn how your body metabolizes food. Like it, I don't know what it's going to be. And mm -hmm. in 2022, it was surrender your story. So I asked back, which story? And they said, all of them. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> yeah. So I started laughing, actually, when they said all of them. And I'm like, yeah, all of them. I'm like, because our story is, it is who we are. Right? We're really our story. And so who, what stories are we holding on to and how are they influencing who we are today? And so I've been on this journey. I talked to you about it at the beginning of the year, like, isn't this interesting that this is what my assignment is? And then we started talking about, well, we're not alone with this because you had to surrender your stories. And, you know, I had to surrender my stories so that we can release the past, right, is the first thing that when you release your stories, because your stories come from trauma, trauma that you've, that you've received in your childhood, teen, a, adult life. And then that trauma turns into suffering. And then if you don't surrender the suffering, it turns into your story. And then um, I noticed that, you know, I have elder parents and I keep telling the elder parent story and I'm like, stop telling that story. Like, that's what I said to myself today, like, stop. And so we have a, a mutual friend, Christy, and I said, I'm not, I'm going to try my best not to talk about that today. <laughs> There's so many other things going on in my life and in the world and in her world that I don't have to keep telling this story. And I realized that by, by keep telling the story of my ailing parents, I'm just living in it instead of being, instead of being in the background sort of like watching it and observing it and then being able to make decisions from a place of grounded wholeness and so I'm working on that I'm, I'm working on applying the teachings to what is an incredibly stressful time for me and living the surrender your story um way yeah that idea, it's so, there's so much in this for us to look at because our work is helping people share their stories, right? And I know that um, there's so much freedom available when people share their stories and have, I've gotten to witness people really getting this freedom and lightness from feeling like they don't have to carry this story by themselves, anymore, right? So there's an element of, Yes, it's so freeing to release them. And that's what we want to be encouraging with this book. It provides healing that I know we'll get into in a moment, the healing that's available in that. And also, when do we get to say, hey, that's not my story anymore, or it was, and now I'm living this, I'm enjoying the life that I have right now. Because yes. sometimes we can carry this and it becomes all of our life rather than us being in this present moment of being here now and enjoying the piece of oh I'm actually there's nothing bad going on right now and sometimes we lose sight of <laughs> that right in this because phase. The, the second part of of the surrender your story like we said there were three parts the first was release the power of the past the second is regain your sovereignty and that's so important um uh, I have a, a, a client, we have a client who's writing mm -hmm. a book, and she's being honored for her, str her, her, her struggles, and her surrender and her grace from the from the life that she lived with her husband, who died from Alzheimer's at 52. And she was, she said, every time I read through my acceptance speech, I start crying. 
And I said to her, that's because you are reading it from the archetype of the wounded child. And I said, the light archetype of the wounded child is the sovereign. And I said, so you have to come into your sovereign. I told her, go like this before she reads it. Come into your sovereign and then read that. Read that acceptance speech because you're then the teacher. You are helping others. And I said, there are people in this audience who are going to be changed from your words that you're going to share. And I said, if you lose it and you start crying, they'll just cry along with you. But you can't cry through the whole speech. <laughs> that's right. not going to be very effective. <laughs> so that's the sovereign, right? That's the standards that we hold and staying in the present and living in integrity, you know, and that's what I think happens when you release your story, you get to become your sovereign because we're all trying to be our sovereign. Most of us, especially the people that know you and I, that's, that's the goal, right? Mm -hmm. To be sovereign. That is the word for 2022, right? <laughs> and, um, and so releasing your story out into the world. I love what you say, Liz, when we share our stories with others, we no longer have to carry them by ourselves. The world now carries it with us. That, I love that because it's true. Not only is the world, not only is the world carrying it with us, but even in the, the nucleus of our writing group, our 20 authors to write this book, we are carrying each other's story. So it, the meaning of community, which happens organically in a collaboration is really, really very important in this particular collaboration because we're all going to be holding the space for each other. And that's why these collaborations are really, it's a magic thing. It's just magic. Mm -hmm. It's so beyond mm -hmm. anything that I could just come up with yeah. in my head, or you could come up with in our heads. I know that the people that we bring in, they're, they're all meeting for a reason. We just don't know what the is quite yet. We have some things of why people are attracted to this, right? Why they're drawn to, but I don't, we don't know yet what's going to come to fruition after this, right? Because and that's the part collaboration, of the Yeah, the collaboration itself, the book, is its own life force entity. And right, and so it needs it needs all of our energies to to become a a, a tool, right, mm -hmm. in the world that is healing and even. Um, just doing it and putting it out there and someone coming across it, there'll be a vibration from the book itself made up of all of our vibrations, our individual vibrations that will be like a healing attunement for someone, no matter where they open the book and read from. And so I could see people having that book on their nightstand and just needing some inspiration and just opening to any one of the 20 chapters and getting the, the attunement that they need to move forward that day. And this, this exchange of energy, which first the authors may share with me or with you their story, right? And then they'll share with the broader collaborative their story. And then they're sharing their story wider, the wider audience when we publish the book. And it feel, if, if you haven't gotten to ex, experience this, it's really, you can tell it, there's divine working through us as we do this, because we, we receive messages, people saying, thank you so much for writing this. I've been through this myself and I hadn't thought of it this way or however it shifts things for people. It's so lovely to witness that and be part of it. Yes. Yes, because so there's healing going on for you as you're writing. There's healing going on as you're listening to the other stories. There's healing going on for releasing it into the world. And so even on um, the last part is discover your next chapter. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I find interesting about that is this book is not just, you know, some of the marketing energy around a collaborative is to say, oh, it, you can declare yourself an author by being part of this book. Yes, if this is your first time and you want to experience what it feels like, you know, take your, to put what is it, put your toe in the water of, of your <laughs> yes. own manuscript. This is a great place to start. 
But if you've also, and, and introduce yourself and maybe your business to mm -hmm. an audience that is going to, everybody in the book is, could be potentially marketing you for, for you, right? If they're sending it out to their people as well. But also if you've already written books, this is a great way to point people towards your books. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was in Transformation 2020, I told the story of Feast and Famine, my, my, one of my books, which then pointed people back to that book for more information on recovery. And so there's so many things that can happen from participating in a collaborative book. That's why I, I love that business concept so much. Because it's just, you can just see, it's like ripples in a pond, right? You just, you, you don't, you jump into the pond and then you can see everything, everything that happens from there. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so there's the three parts, the kind of the flow that we're looking at with, with mm -hmm. the story of releasing the power of the past, mm -hmm. regaining your sovereignty and discovering your next chapter, which part of the collaborative process is will be about that, right? Is actually looking at, okay, well, what is next for, for, for you and for each of the authors? I think let's talk about some of the, uh, I know we talked about how often we develop our stories based on the fact that we've had some traumatic event or trauma mm -hmm. in the past. I think we should talk a little bit about what we mean by trauma, because sometimes yeah. people don't, um, might say, oh, I didn't have a traumatic event or something like that. What, what do you think about that, Robin? Yeah, I mean, trauma is one of those words that we, we expect it means something really terrible happened to you, but it's not. Trauma happens every day, right? It's when something happens to you that has an impact on you and, and maybe changes you on some level and you don't even know it right? Or you, you, you don't even know what happened. For me, for me, I, I, I was, I always took everything personally. So I experienced a lot of humiliation in my life. And that all those humiliations um, became a thing for me, became my story, right? Became, I, I would expect them. And, and so finally, and then, and it created a lot of suffering for me. And then I didn't know how to heal that suffering. And then I, be, I became addicted to food. So I, I and, and, and so then I had to heal from that. But I didn't know that all of these things that were going on in my life were so traumatic. I mean, and yet, if I told you some of the stories, you'd say, sure. So I'm just going to give a real quick story. I was in fifth grade and we were playing kickball. And I kicked the ball, I kicked a home run, but I was wearing a kilt. And so as I came around third base, my skirt fell off. Oh, no. And so, the, and everyone was laughing at me, right? So it became one of those humiliation stories that affected my ability to kick a home run, home run in life. Yes. Because if I kicked a home run in any part of my life, it would be humiliating, or I would look for the humiliation in that. And so I had to really look at, I had to surrender this idea of humiliation. And the way that I learned to do that was when I came to understand that nobody could judge me unless I gave them the title of judge. Mm. Otherwise, they were just giving me their opinion. Mm. And I could take it or not. That was up to me. Mm. But that's how I learned to be able to not take things personally and not feel humiliated by it because that was my story is that I, I would be humiliated and then, then, you know, other, I would do other things to prevent that. And it was just wonderful when I learned all of that, but understanding it all allowed me to write feast and famine. And so I want to say this, when we say discover your next chapter, the third part, so you could be listening to us, talking to the listeners and saying, I, I don't, I haven't done anything with my story, but you don't, like, I'm not now a um, life coach or I'm not an author, but you could be a better version of yourself that is impacting the lives of yourself and your children or your partnership or whatever, or now you're 
doing community service. Like it, healing your, uh, surrendering your story doesn't mean you have to take it and become a professional at it. And we really want people who aren't that, that too to want to be in the book. Like they want to know that if they've surrendered their story, now they're a better parent. We'd love that. Mm. And, um, and so I don't want people to feel excluded because they're thinking that the people that we want in this book are people that have taken, or the people we want only in this book are people mm -hmm. that have taken their story, healed from their trauma, and then are doing something in the world professionally. We want those people that are doing something in the world personally too. Right, that that there is is important to tell those stories because we're not just working, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the whole we are we are our life is both work and not work, and so we want to know how life works for you and how it's made a difference in your life personally as well as professionally. And we do want people that have done some work in the healing space so that they have yeah. been. Um, yeah, going through the healing process, yes. um, whatever that looks like for you. There's so many different modalities of healing that you might have experienced. Mm -hmm. Could be things that you have done on your own and um, explored yourself. And so we do want people that have done that level of exploration. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's important because we want the book to be a teaching tool for whoever is reading it. And so we want you to be able to share what worked for you mm -hmm. because people will discover new modalities, new mainstream, even new vitamins, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? New ways to work out, whatever it is that they didn't know before because of you, your participating in this book mm -hmm. and showing them how it helped you because you know, you, we all have a residence and the people who resonate with our story will read that and say, oh, that's Liz's story, but what did she do to feel better? And then they'll see things and they'll be like, oh, maybe I should try that. So that's what we want to offer people are, are, are ways to feel better, ways mm -hmm. to receive grace in their life. Mm -hmm. We're all about. <laughs> So as far as the details of the project, so we will be writing this over the summer. Authors will be writing it over the summer. We're looking at launching in November or the fall. At some well, we're looking for we're like July 15th is when, you know, you're writing one chapter. Mm -hmm. um, it's a couple of thousand words and mm -hmm. um, and we'll I, I will help you with that. I'm a writing coach and mm -hmm. um and then you'll submit it in mid-July, you'll submit the first draft and then we'll read them and then we'll get it right back to you. And then by August 15th, the final draft is due. And, um, and, then, and then in, this, in September and October, we'll go through the whole, um, uh, what are we, publishing like process. Editing, publishing, yeah. <laughs> publishing, that's what yeah publishing, all that. Play at, so. All that good stuff, create, creating a, a cover, you know, just an exciting cover. And, um, and then, and then we'll, and then we'll launch in November. And I'm looking at ways that we can incorporate other types of media into this uh, mm -hmm. book as well. So these details aren't finalized, but I'd love for us to be able to do an audiobook components yeah. and a some type of video um, component, which could people can participate in, or if they just want to write write the chapter and and focus on the the writing part without the other media, that's fine too. But I, all the things are coming together at this one time, and I'm like, oh, this would be the perfect book to include the the video components and the audio components as well. So it'll be fun to see how those those come together. Anything else you let people know? Well, I think what, what I have discovered as a writing coach is that when you write your own life story, you heal yourself. And when you share it with others, you help to heal them. And so I really do believe that participating in this book will be a healing process for people. Because to also take your story and write it succinctly, mm. 
is a true gift and something that you can read over and over again for yourself to say, because I just read, um, I realized that I had never purchased Transformation 2020, <laughs> you know, the book I'm in. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I never read this book. So I bought it and I read my part and I'm like, wow, okay, thank you. And I thought about things that have happened since I wrote that and how my life, my healing and transformation story continues. So it's a really a tool. It's a tool for you. It's a gift for yourself and it's a gift for everyone that will read it. Mm. Yes. Oh, I, I'm so excited to be creating this with you, Robin. This will be yes. so fun and I can't wait to see what authors we have for the who shows up, right? Shows up who we get. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. And, and um, really everybody, here's what I want to say about that. If you feel like I should do this and then you're like, oh, what do I am? Uh, hemming and hawing, just do it. Have the courage to do it because if your soul is prompting you on any level to do this, it's what's next on your journey. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about um, Michael Singer, famous spiritual author, The Surrender Experiment. And he became so incredibly successful in all parts of his life. And he said that the way that he would do that is that if his mind said no, that's what he did. <laughs> In every situation, that's what he did. like if he, if something, if the opportunity came and his mind was like, well, I don't know, this, that, the other thing, right? He'd be like, okay, I better do it. And then he, <laughs> and then he got on this journey of, of following, following, mm. you know, his soul, following his heart's desire and it, it's, it became this incredible journey. And so that's what I would say to you. If you're hemming, you know, if you want to do it, great, let us know. But if you're hemming and hawing, do it anyway. <laughs> Sometimes that mind, it's trying to protect yeah. us, but it gets in the way of mm -hmm. a lot of important stuff. Yeah, oh, so there to find out more information, you can certainly contact Robin or me directly. You can look at the website, which is greenheartliving.com backslash surrender your story and i'll put that up as well and i'm so excited to see where this goes next thank you yeah. robin for taking the time to talk today okay take care